Hey guys, and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a retro handheld. This is the Palm M125. Uh, yeah, this is one of the earlier yet cheaper um, PDA type devices that was available. This came out in 2001, I believe. So it, w it was actually... It was once they became established and got popular, this was a more budget option that was available at the time. And uh, there was other things like the Apple Newton and stuff that came out real early along the line. This was like, I don't know, eight or so years into that whole handheld craze, but it was really just starting to pick up at that time. I remember when I was a little kid, I used to see these. I had something that looked real similar to one of these, but it wasn't a real PDA. It was like one of those little cheap organizer things, but it was designed to look just like this. And I remember playing with that all the time when I was little. So when I found this at a local Goodwill, I had to pick it up, especially because it's basically brand new. The box is open. However, the uh, contents inside don't look like they've ever been used. Uh, we'll just go ahead and look over the box here real quick. You see we got the picture of the device on the front here. It's an M125 handheld, um, expandable and connectable. Um, we have MMC card support, SD and USB. So yes, this was after USB took hold. Um, this was around the Windows 98, 2000 ME time period. Actually, I believe those are the operating systems compatible with. If you want to go earlier than that, you have to use a serial dock instead of the USB one. Yes, some people were still using serial devices at that time. Actually, a lot of people were. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll go ahead and look over here at the compatible software list. We see we have AOL, email, uh, Avant, Go. I'm not sure what that is, Earthlink, uh, we got Lotus Notes, Eudoria Pro, I don't know what that is either, Microsoft Outlook and Outlook Express, there's our standard email client, multi-mail, probably another type of uh, email client, Netscape Communicator, um, some sort of IM system maybe, I'm not sure, uh, da -da. <laughs> most internet and corporate email software, yeah, I kind of doubt that anymore. And I don't know what any of this stuff is. Goldmine is probably some sort of game. Lotus Organizer, uh, don't know. But yeah, there was, there was a lot of little apps, if you can call them, available for this at the day. Install valuable bonus software from the included CDs. I don't know how valuable it is. Well, on the front it says, over $90 of bonus software included. Yeah, I don't think that's uh, worth $90 anymore, but it is still in here, so um, we can write directly on the screen in your own handwriting. It has a protective flip cover with clock window, which is actually pretty cool. I wish my phone had something like that. Um, simple and fast backup to your PC with Palm USB Hotsync Cradle. Now that's kind of neat. Um, however, I do believe if I want to actually transfer any software to this, I'm going to have to get out a Windows 2000 computer. Oh boy, um, I have one somewhere. Not sure if it works anymore. That's going to be jolly fun to try to figure that out. <laughs> but yeah, we have a handheld with batteries. I believe it still had the original batteries in it when I got it. And thankfully, oh, they didn't leak. I was just dreading opening up that battery door because it was you know heavy. Like, oh God, it's got batteries in it. Opened it up. They still looked all right. They expired like back in 2008 or 2009 or something. So they may or may not have been the original ones that were used with it. Um, however, I don't really think this was ever used for any length of time. But we'll get into that in a minute. Um, we got the Cradle, uh, CD-ROMs with a whole bunch of software on them. And yes, PC requirements. PC running Windows 98, 2000, or ME. Uh, Windows 95 and NT require the Hotsync Cradle with serial port on it. Ooh boy. Uh, 16 whole megabytes of RAM, 64 megabytes recommended. Uh, yeah, generally computers have more than that nowadays, although the one I'm planning to use for this, uh, it's got, I think, 32 megs, so, uh, eh, actually, no, it might, no, I think it has 128 meg in it now. I think I've upgraded it to 128 whopping megabytes of memory, 30 megabytes available hard disk space, again, 
I think most computers have more than that nowadays. Uh, CD-ROM drive, that's actually a problem because that machine doesn't have one normally, so I'm going to have to figure out how to uh, get these uh, CDs on there. I do have an external USB CD reader, but I don't know if it's going to be recognized by that machine automatically or not. Um, I do believe I have a CD-ROM drive that goes in place of the floppy drive on it. It's like one of the, it's a compact Armada 7400, I think. Um, so I do have the drive for that somewhere, but I have absolutely no idea where it is. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to find that. And yes, one available USB port, and it only has one. So yeah, we'll see if we can use that. Um, what's kind of interesting here on the back is it shows all these SD cards, but they're like Palm branded ones with stuff on them already. I don't know if you have to use their SD cards if they're like formatted specially or something for this, or if you can just whack any old SD card in there. I think you can just use any SD card, and probably non-SDHC, of course, um, which is going to be another tricky thing, because I don't know if I have any SD cards that are less than 4 gigabytes. Whew, I think I have a 512 meg one somewhere, so we'll give that a shot and see if it works in here. Um, because I believe that you could get a free 16 megabyte, 16 megabyte SD card from Palm. If you registered this thing, they would send you a free 16 megabyte SD card, which back in the day, I don't know if that would have been a lot or not. It sure isn't now because most SD cards, like the smallest ones you can usually buy now are 4 gig and they go anywhere up to 128, I think you might even be able to get a 240 gigabyte SD card, which is kind of insane when you think about it. And this is just back in 2001. So 15 years ago, the um, SD card that would have been included with it would have been 16 megabytes. It actually wasn't included. You had to register the device and apply for it or something and they would send it to you for free, supposedly. You probably had to pay shipping and handling and crap and most likely it would have ended up costing you more than just going out and buying one, but I don't know for sure. Um, it's just one of those kind of deals. Um, yeah. Let's see, if we look on the bottom here, we can see some of the accessories that you can get for these. It had interchangeable face plates, which is pretty cool. So you can make it some really lurid cheetah print nasty thing or other bright hideous colors. I'm pretty sure the face plate that came with it is the best looking one. Uh, there's kind of a little wallet type case thing that goes on there, so you can keep your credit cards in there too. So if you uh, if you have your wallet stolen, you also get your uh, device stolen. That's that's nice. <laughs> little folding keyboard. That's uh, kind of nice, but then again, I don't know how much you'd actually want to be writing on one of these things. It's now well, it would be a whole lot better than trying to scribble on the little writing section on the bottom of that. It's ugh. I've tried to use those before and just never could get the hang of it. Um, and we have some sort of little modem device, Palm modem. It's like a little docking station that allows it to connect up to the internet. I don't think you'd be doing a whole lot of web browsing anymore on one of these. Even back in 2001, you couldn't do a whole lot with this. Um, and let's go ahead and open this sucker up and see what we got inside here. I think there's a dead bee floating around in here somewhere, so I'm going to try not to get that all over the table. Here's the device itself, still in the little bubble wrap pack. We have our dock, which has never been taken out of the wrapping until today. Actually, I might not because I have another one of these docks somewhere that's already opened up. And there's our dead bugs. This has been sitting in somebody's garage for a while, I think. And we have a whole bunch of documentation and our glorious two CD-ROM pack with the uh, Palm desktop software and the bonus software. So that's going to be kind of neat. I'm going to hopefully be able to get some of that installed. So we have our solutions guide for Palm handhelds here, which is basically just like an advertisement of all the other stuff that you could get. Um, I have one of these M515s here that they show in the picture somewhere. If I can ever find it, I'll do a video on that, but I don't know where it ran off to. Maybe long gone forever, but I hope not. Uh, we have the modem down here. 
aluminum hard case. That should be kind of neat. Little keyboard that clips onto the uh, this is i705 series. That's kind of neat. So you can have a little texty style QWERTY keyboard on there. And we have our palm portable keyboard down here, which I would really like to find one of those. That'd be cool. Um, kind of hope I run across one of these somewhere because uh, that would be neat to have. I can't say I'd ever really use it, but it would be compatible with the M515. However, um, as I recall, the battery on that is totally gone, like really, really dead. Uh, there's a bigger uh, bigger picture of that unit there, the 515. That's a really nice, like all metal construction, glass screen, really beautiful device. Um, feels really, really solid. I, I like that one, and I wish I hadn't lost it. I don't know where. I hope I find it again. I'll probably find it when I'm cleaning out some other junk. Because um, I really need to clean around here. But, uh, yeah, we got some phones and things that can connect to it. Got a Bluetooth print adapter. Wow. So they had Bluetooth uh, back then, I guess. Uh, Bluetooth headsets. Uh, some other MPI tech Bluetooth print adapter, all these different accessories and stuff that you get for them. Pretty neat stuff. Wow, there's <laughs> the pinnacle of 2001 phone technology right there, Sony Ericsson. Uh, it looks hideous, <laughs> to be completely, completely honest. And for a second there, where it says photographic memory, I thought that said pornographic memory. Hi, mind in the gutter. All right. Yeah, not anything too spectacular looking in here. Ooh, a little pinball game of some kind. It's, uh, looks kind of garbage, actually. <laughs> that looks really basic and not very fun at all. Um, they really were overselling these things as, like, can do everything kind of device. But, uh, yeah. They really were just an organizer, a glorified organizer, but an organizer nonetheless bunch of games and stuff you could get for a lot of the higher-end models. Since this one's got a monochrome screen, you're not going to be playing a lot of this on it. Um, I'm hoping there was a game included with it. I think there is, but I'm not sure if we're 100% there. We have some sort of card readers, a 9-volt battery adapter. For, wow, so you can charge it off of a 9-volt battery. <laughs> that is absolutely fantastic. Um, Wow, this is just crazy. Trifold executive leather case. <laughs> that just looks like something from the 70s there. That's just awful. These aluminum cases are pretty cool, though. Lots of different little cases and wallet things and stuff. Get styluses for them. Um, wow. Four ways to keep your handheld from becoming a handful. Huh. Cloak 2.0 data organization encryption software. Jive 1.1 easy email address synchronization between Microsoft Outlook Express Palm Desktop software and your Palm handheld. Uh, doesn't the doc and the software already kind of do that stuff? I thought that was something. <laughs> I don't know. That's weird. Pocket Mirror 3.1 Professional. Powerful business tool that synchronizes public folders and subfolders in Microsoft Outlook with your Palm handheld. Isn't that what this does? It, it, it synchronizes your email? Crap? Uh, okay. I don't know. Pocket Journal 1.0.4. Seamlessly transfer information in your Microsoft Outlook journal between your Palm handheld and PC. Um, shouldn't this just all be like one app? <laughs> it's just a thing for synchronizing stuff from your uh, Outlook to this thing. So, why is that broken into a whole bunch of different parts? Shouldn't those just all be separate features of a single app? I don't know. And it's all from the same publisher, so I, I guess you had to buy all of those separately, I would imagine. There you go. You can get a Bible reader for it. Um, that way you can read a horrible digital copy of it everywhere you go and burn your eyes out? I mean, seriously, who would, who in the right mind would want to read a book that large on that tiny and garbage of a screen? I mean, that's gonna, that's gonna destroy your eyes trying to read on this thing. I mean, 
It's all right if you want to just take a little note on it, but man, reading the entire Bible on this? Ugh, yay. Let's see here. Shows off that you can expand it with your 16 megabyte SD card. whoop de freaking do Wow, it has like a physical, like big slider switch thing on there. Now, nowadays, they just have a tiny little lock on the side. This has like this weird big tab on it. That's strange. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an SD card that looked like that before. Um, yeah, that's about it. We got our strange looking 90s get up people traveling tourists. I don't know. <sighs> This is just so cliche 90. I love the love the fonts on this. My god. Uh, being a digital media design major, all of this is making me cringe horribly. Oh look, there's the screen protector that was on it originally that they must have taken off. Oh my. Look at that. You can get a wood grain case for it. Ugh. If it wasn't hideous enough already. Oh. Oh, even worse. Some sort of horrible fake snake skin or something and something that's supposed to look like carbon fiber yeah, the whole accessories catalog too wasn't that pretty much what that was <laughs> these must be the official accessories we got our keyboard and modem and a bunch of face plates and oh boy yep same kind of little horrible fake leather case things yeah Nothing too interesting there. Read this first, M100 handheld series. We still got, oh, still running Windows 95 or NT? Uh, no I'm not, I'm running Windows 10. Uh, have a serial connection only on your Windows or Mac computer. <laughs> Before USB was a thing, we had serial. <laughs> Those were not the days. Yep, that gives you your order form, so you can order the cereal cradle. So you'd buy it and then not be able to use it until that got shipped to you. That's just dandy. It'd be easier just to buy a new computer at that point, because even back in that time, I think uh, Windows 95 was pretty outdated. Palm protection plan, I won't be using that. <clears throat> what else we got here? Um, uh, nothing. And a warranty card, uh, yes, don't need that either. Read that first, I'll read that later. And registration. Oh God, did they actually register it? There was something torn off of here, so the, the users, the original user may have actually registered this. Or is, no, nope, never mind. <laughs> it just opens. Uh, so yep, nope, as usual, never been registered. And let's see, getting started guide as all the crap falls off the table. Getting started guide, M100 handheld series. Don't think anybody in their right mind is interested in that. I'll probably have to look at it later after I uh, fail to get this thing set up. Is there anything else in the box? Uh, some batteries and nope. Yep, that's it. All right. Let's have a look at the device itself. As you can see, this thing is basically completely brand new. It looks... It doesn't have a scratch on it. It still has a little uh, thing here saying how to put the SD card in. It's still got the little blanking card, which is like longer than a normal SD card and sticks out oddly. It's like, that wouldn't be too nice if, uh, if you had that in your pocket. It'd be cutting into you. Um, the strange thing about this one is it actually uses standard old uh, AAA batteries. Got a couple of Radio Shack branded doodads in there. So yeah, um, battery life is supposed to be very, very good on this. First thing I want to show off here is the really weird little flip cover. Um, it's a strangely rubbery kind of thing, but what it does is it gives you a little window here on the front and exposes the up button on the menu. If you press that, it shows you the time and date. That's pretty neat. You know, that's actually really pretty cool. So if we open it up, this just flips around to the back. 
look at the screen. I think it's 160 by 160 resolution. So, yeah, not exactly going to blow away a modern phone or anything. We have our little stylus that goes on the side. It's just a plasticky kind of stylus. Nothing too spectacular there. Some of the other ones came with like this real heavy, chunky metal stylus, which was nice. Um, this thing's rocking a 33 megahertz processor. It was codenamed Dragon Ball. wonder if it was named after Dragon Ball Z. Possibly. I don't know. <laughs> Why else would it be called the Dragon Ball? I have no idea. Eight megabytes of RAM. So yeah, this thing's got a whopping eight megabytes of RAM, which uh, if um, the specs or the requirements on the box are correct, then that's like, you know, half as much as the computer that it would be interfacing to it would have, which I don't know, back in 2001, eight meg wasn't a whole lot. <laughs> um, but for a little handheld, I guess that's, you know, that that's something. Um, the thing with this particular device, unlike a lot of the other Palm devices, is the OS on it is non-upgradable. Um, it was, like, built into a little ROM chip that could not be flashed on here. So a lot of the other ones you could flash them with a new operating system when it came out. This one was locked into, let's see, was it OS 4.0.1. So... Yeah, that was a little bit of a drawback to this particular unit, plus monochrome screen. So it's a little more basic. I think this retailed for $250 back in the day, so it wasn't exactly cheap, but it was a whole lot cheaper than other alternatives at the time. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and fire it up and see what we got going on here. It pretty much turns on instantly, which is always nice. We have our address book. So it's got the tech support stuff for Palm already in there, which is kind of neat. Uh, we have a calculator, which, uh, yep, just standard kind of four-banger calculator with a little bit of science-y stuff on there. Um, we have our memo pad, card info. What does card info do? Card, no card inserted. That would be our SD card. Uh, we have our clock, which is a clock date book, which uh, I think is, there it goes, more commonly referred to as a calendar, <laughs> allows you to put in different events and things and gives you reminders and whatnot. Um, I'm actually going to use the stylus because this is a pain in the butt to use with your hands. Um, we have graffiti, which allows us to use our little pad down it here at the bottom to write letters and numbers um, and it'll kind of like type it in try to auto recognize what you're uh, writing on there we have our hot sink for moving stuff from the computer over to here or from here to the computer memo pad which allows us to write out little memos using our graffiti thingamajig oh boy this is really difficult to do through the camera notepad which just allows you to you know scribble around and draw stuff. Go ahead and delete that. The screen actually works pretty well on here. I'm surprised. Let's see if we can draw a stupid little face or something on here. Yay! Yeah, it works. It's, uh, you wouldn't be impressing any professional graphic artists with this, but uh, it works and it's not horrible to use. So that's uh, more than can be said for a lot of things. The screen actually is pretty visible. However, if you turn the backlight on, which I believe you hold this down, yeah, it like inverts the colors. Looks all right in total darkness, but if you're in any sort of light, it just washes it out horribly and looks just dreadful. But if you, uh, if you have it in complete darkness, you turn that on. You can kind of see it there. It actually works pretty well. So it like inverts all the colors really strangely, but it works. It's just a little weird. Um, that was a lot of things. A lot of the stuff people complained about back in the day was that particular light feature, and there was like an app that you could install on it that would not invert the colors and things. So there was workarounds that people figured out back in the day. Um, but yeah, 
I guess now I will attempt to try to figure out how to install some software on here because there's really not too much preloaded on it. Um, it's just got your basic, basic software. So I'm going to break out the Windows 2000 computer and see if any of the software stuff still works. I hope it does. This will be an interesting journey. So I will see you guys in a few minutes. It'll probably be a couple hours for me, but hopefully for you guys it'll only be a few seconds. YouTube magic. Okay, I've managed to install some more software on this thing. It's actually really easy to use. The um, integrated syncing software, the hot sync stuff. Very simple to install software and to move data from this to your computer and back. So um, hats off to him, really. It's very simple to set up. Only took a few minutes. Um, so some of the stuff I installed on here, there's an app called Giraffe, which uh, is basically kind of like a learn to use the graffiti uh, type thing so you can get fast at it. Like letters fall down, you have to write them as they're falling. I won't bother demonstrating that one because it's kind of boring. We have Hardball, which uh, is also known as Breakout, which um, is a fairly competent breakout clone, which is almost impossible to play through the viewfinder. <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Back. It's actually a fairly decent little uh, breakout clone. Kind of difficult to play on here through the viewfinder, but it works. Oh, and yep, I screwed up. I suck. Anyway, uh, we have that. We have Mine Hunt, which is usually known as Mine Sweeper. Pretty standard. Oh, and immediately the first thing I hit is a mine. Yep. Because I am that good. There's a, there's no way of knowing for the first one. <laughs> there never there never is. Um. Yeah, it, it's it's Mine Sweeper. Fairly competent version though. Um, we have let's see sub hunt, which I believe is oh what's this kind of game called? I think like Depth Charge or something. So you have your little submarine up at the top here, and you gotta or your um, little boat up here, and you gotta sh shoot these little missiles down to kill off the submarines before oh, before you get hit by a little floating up mine thingamajigs. So yeah, it's it's a fairly competent little game too. Sort of fun, I guess, if you if you have a lot of time to kill. I'm gonna stop playing this now because it's kind of horrible. <laughs> it's not terrible, but it's it could be better. Let's see what else do we have on here? Puzzle. That's the most tedious named game ever. Oh, it's one of these things where you slide the bunch of my jiggers around to try to. It looks like it's already solved to me. I figured. Want to line those up? Um, new puzzle. Oh, okay. Ooh, I don't have enough time in the world to try to figure that out. Screw it. What else do we have? Palm Reader. Um, we have... Anything else? I think that's all I installed because the other stuff required ancient things that are no longer active. You know, trying to get this thing on the internet wasn't going to happen. Uh, we have... STSC... Number four interface one and the empty chair. Uh, you know, I think this is actually a Star Trek, not that one. The other one, I believe, is a Star Trek novel of some kind. I read somewhere on the box that it came with that. It's actually, I might actually read that. I keep hitting the empty chair. This is very fiddly to do through a viewfinder. How do I get back out of this? Menu? Is that menu? No. Book. Open. 
that one, not that one. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I go back to the reader. Not sure if this is uh, copyright two thousand. Is this even is this the book? I think it is. I don't know. This can't be the Star Trek one. This must be something else. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which file that's actually opening. I'm confused. But yeah, uh, that's really all there is that I can demonstrate with this, because I don't think I can get the software for this anymore. Anything that was available back in the day, I'm sure all the databases for that are long gone. But I will say that this little uh, this little dock is quite the nifty thing. I'm, I'm impressed with how well it works. Just drop that on there. It goes beep. It's not actually connected to anything, but you can just press the little hot sync button and it automatically uh, transfers all your stuff over, brings up the software automatically, everything just happens. You drop it on there, press a button, and away you go. It's a pretty neat little design. But anyway guys, that's just a little overview of this. I know that video is way too long, but hopefully you guys stuck around and enjoyed it nonetheless. I'll hopefully be making some videos about some of the other handheld devices that I've got here soon, and... Take it easy, guys. Hope you had a good one.